In order to love ourselves, we need to know ourselves. And how do we get to know ourselves? We need self-awareness. Self-love isn't just something that magically appears. It takes work, a lot of hard work, a lot of inner work. In fact, it's non-negotiable. If you want to create lasting, real self-love, It's non-negotiable. We have to do the inner work, which is very messy. Sometimes it feels like three steps forward, one step back, uh, or the other way around. And it's just very difficult because you're accessing traumas and you go into places that you suppressed many times for many, many years. Here's why inner work is the foundation of learning to love ourselves and how we can start today. First of all, how many times have we heard the phrase, just love yourself? But no one actually told us how to do that. Self-love doesn't just happen by wishing for it. It comes from working on ourselves, our emotions, beliefs, and the things that hold us back. That's what inner work is all about. Understanding your emotions, beliefs, and patterns. When we start doing inner work, we begin to peel back the layers of old stories, fears, and insecurities, just like onion. I'm sure you've heard the onion analogy, but it's just that. Like you peel layer by layer, and it's a slow process of all these old beliefs um, and stories and fears. And as we do that, something incredible happens. We start to see ourselves for who we truly are, without any noise, with all our flaws. And when we truly see ourselves with our flaws and we start to like ourselves, this is where self-love begins. One of the biggest reasons why inner work is non-negotiable for self-love is that it helps to heal past wounds. We all carry emotional scars from our childhood, relationships, and these wounds often make us feel unworthy or not good enough. Because very often um, there's a shame and guilt associated with that, and shame and guilt are very are emotions that are low vibration emotions. And so it made us, it makes us feel unworthy, unworthy of love, unworthy of someone liking us, loving us, unworthy of achieving success. And when we dive into the inner work, we start to heal those old wounds. We can release the pain that has been keeping us stuck. This doesn't happen overnight. But every step we take in healing brings us closer to loving ourselves more fully. Think of it this way. We don't want to build a house on a broken foundation. The same goes for self-love. We have to heal the cracks within before we can create something strong and lasting. And it's never too late. I started my healing journey very late in life, probably around 40, so like 10 years ago. I can do another video on my personal story, but I went from self loathing to now finally feel content and in love with myself, with all my flaws, shadows, all these parts that I disowned. Another reason why inner work is so crucial is the self-awareness. How can you love yourself if you don't know yourself? And with inner work and self-awareness, that's how we start to get to know ourselves, accept the parts that we have disowned, and then truly, really start loving ourselves, liking ourselves. Through inner work, we start to understand our thoughts, our emotions, our patterns. We learn what drives us, what triggers us and where our insecurities come from. And this all comes from self-awareness. Self-awareness equals self-love. When we gain this level of self-awareness, we stop being so hard on ourselves. We stop criticizing ourselves. 
for feeling a certain way or reacting to certain situations in a particular way. Uh, we start showing ourselves compassion, which is the first step towards lasting self-love. I mean, how many of us are so hard on ourselves? We just don't give ourselves a grace. We, we, we're we not compassionate with ourselves. And we wouldn't talk like that to a friend or our child. Showing compassion to ourselves, it's extremely important. Now, let's talk about breaking negative patterns because this is where real transformation happens. We all have patterns that we fall into and whether it's a self-doubt, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, or constant self-criticism. These patterns keep us from loving ourselves. But the good news is through inner work, we can break free from them. It is a process. It requires a lot of self-awareness, a lot of time, a lot of hard work, but it happens. When you become aware of all these patterns that you have, you can choose differently next time. You can stop the cycle of negative thinking and instead replace it with self-compassion, confidence, and love. And the more we do that, it gets easier. The more love we show ourselves, the more the love towards ourselves grows. It's like planting a seed. Inner work is the soil that nurtures our self-love. So how do you start doing inner work? Here are a couple of simple practices you can use to kick off your journey towards lasting self-love. But you need to start with very small steps. These are just very little things that you can start doing throughout your day once a day, in whichever time of the day, it doesn't matter. Find what works for you. Uh, I usually do it in the morning or very late at night because that's when it's quiet at home. And that's when I can focus. So first is journaling. I'm a big, big proponent on journaling. I've been doing this for many, many years. I started many years ago because I had severe anxieties, I had panic attack, and I just, my thoughts kept like running and running and I felt like I was going crazy. So journaling helped me put my thoughts on the page. So you can write about your emotions, about your thoughts, about any limiting beliefs you hold about yourself, or you, can, or you can just write stream of consciousness. Like just dump it all on the page, whatever it's in your mind. And it has this healing properties almost. When you put it on the page, it sort of frees up so much space in your brain because you don't have the need to hold all these thoughts in your head. Second practice is mindfulness. When I don't do that, for days or weeks, I start to feel like anxiety is coming back. So for me, mindful practice is essential. Throughout the day, notice when you start to criticize yourself or fall into negative thinking. Just observe it. Just observe your thoughts um, in those moments without judging it. It will be very hard not to judge, but slowly, slowly, you can change that. Don't beat yourself up. If you notice um, you have negative thoughts or if you slip at one time and you start experiencing again negative thoughts, it, it is a process. It's not going to be like a magic wand and then the negative thoughts disappear. And actually, the first thing would be a good idea to just notice how many negative thoughts we have instead of trying to change them and I did this exercise before where I was trying not to have a negative thought during the day. And that is when I realized how many negative thoughts I had. I mean, literally about everything. <laughs> it's just remarkable how unaware we are sometimes of our thoughts. And so it helped me to try not to have a negative thought so I can be aware of how many negative thoughts I have. Um, maybe you can try that instead of noticing the negative thoughts. 
So the more aware you become of these moments, the easier it will be to shift them. And finally, self-compassion is key. Again, when you mess up, don't beat yourself up. Talk to yourself as if you're talking to a friend. Sometimes it helps to refer to yourself with your name. I've heard that technique many years ago, and I really like it. So instead of saying, it's okay, I'm next time I'm not going to think this way, I just say, Lucia, it's okay. It happens. Next time, you can do better. So as if Lucia, it's not me, but it's a friend. And it actually helps me in my head to be more compassionate because I'm not talking to myself, <laughs> but I am. So that's why inner work is non-negotiable for self-love. It heals your past, builds self-awareness, and helps you break the patterns that keep you stuck. When we commit to the inner work, you com we, we are committing to ourselves. And that's the most powerful thing we can do, the most powerful gift we can give to ourselves. So if you find this video helpful, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.